Hey there, Apani here and I'm back with another video. In this video I'm going to be going through adding multiple jumps, adding actual ledges to the stage itself and adding some ledge states such as the ledge roll state, the ledge climb state, the ledge hold state, the ledge catch state and the ledge jump state. And before I dive into the tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the Patreon where you can get access to all the folders and files that you see in this video and access to the Discord server where you can meet the tight-knit community that I'm growing where you can receive one-on-one -on -one help and a group of people that are trying to help each other out. So without further ado, let's jump straight into this. Alright, so one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to go to the state machine and we're going to add in some new states. So under the last state that you've added, add in B states. This includes the ledge catch, ledge hold, ledge climb, ledge jump, and ledge roll. Okay, so once we're done with that, scroll down to where all the code for the states are, and then go over here and write out the name of each of those states that we just wrote under the get underscore transition function. So states dot, and then ledge underscore catch, ledge underscore hold, etc., etc. So for the catch state, this is the code that you want to input. I'll give you a few seconds so that you can write it down. Okay, and so for the ledge hold state, this is the code. This is the first bit of the code. I'll give you some time to pause and copy that down. And then for the other bit of the code, this is what it looks like from line 309 to 326. Then for the ledge climb state, here is the code. Uh, don't worry if you don't understand what any of this stuff means, I'll explain it soon. If you want access to all of this code without having to uh, copy it down by hand, join the Patreon where you get access to all the code and the files and one-to-one -one help on my Discord server, you get access to my Discord server. Then for the next thing we've got, here is the ledge jump, this one's kind of big as well. So I'll show you the first half, let me differentiate this so it's clear. So yeah, this is the first half, up to where it says attack. Then if I scroll down, here's the rest of the code. Then lastly, here is the code for the ledge roll state. This is all in one. Line 402 to 427. Alright, and one last thing that we need to do before we are done with this script is go all the way to the bottom and we're going to add a new function. And this function is going to be called ledge. So you want to call this ledge, and this is quite a larger function. So this is what you want to copy. And then for the second part, put this down. I'll explain what all of this means but again if you don't want to have to write this all down by hand because I have gotten a few comments of people making some spelling errors you can go to the Patreon where you can get access to the scripts, the files, the folders of this project as we're working on it and access to my Discord server where you can get one-on-one -on -one help with me. Alright so now what we want to do with this function is scroll all the way to the top of get transitions which should be over here and under the falling function what you want to add is this line of code right here if you don't understand what any of this means i'm going to explain it in a sec once we've copied and pasted all of the code so now from here we want to go to our fox script and over here we want to add in some new variables these are the variables that our state machine script is going to be using but these ones right over here and then from here we want to scroll down and we're going to add a new function we want to probably add this under play animations and it's going to be called reset ledges or reset ledge right here okay so going back to the state machine there's actually a state logic code that we have to add the code here is going to be this um, just want to indent this properly so this is going to be the code here 
and then there's one more thing that we're gonna have to do whilst we're in the state machine fox script so yeah this is the code you want to copy yeah so from here what you want to do is we want to scroll down to the landing state which should be somewhere here and over here in landing we want to add in this line of code so we want to add parent dot reset jumps over here then we also want to go to the standing state and we want to add the same thing at the very top now if you're smart you're going to realize that we don't we haven't actually implemented the state in the fox character so that's what we're about to do right now so moving on from the state machine back to the fox script we want to add in this line of code under the air variables we might actually want to clean this up because this relates to landing la landing lag so i'm going to reorganize this real quick i'm going to call this air variables and the other one will be landing variables to make everything clearer jumping very jump jump squat i think goes under i'll leave it in there yeah you just want to make sure that things are clean when you're coding and so we can make this one this is the amount of air jumps that we have and so from here what you want to do is you want to scroll all the way down and whereabouts the reset ledge function is you want to add in this function which is uh, reset jumps i also want you to notice how the reset jumps function has a capital j that's quite important and so lastly the last thing that we have to do is go back to the state machine and then go to the air state which is over here and on the air movement add in these lines of code let me just fix that there you go pause the video so that you can copy it down remember if you don't want to have to copy down each line of code by hand join the patreon where you can get access to the scripts the folders and the files as well as access to the discord server where you can get one-to-one -one help i'm growing quite a tight-knit community there and so i'm able to give you more of my time if you join the community now rather than later and so the very 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 last thing that we have to do when it comes to the state machine script is scroll all the way down here to the animations and add all of the states for when you're when you're touching the ledge so ledge catch ledge hold ledge jump ledge climb and ledge roll and here is all of the code for those animations and so apart from that we're basically done with the fox character the next thing that we're now going to add is the ledges and after that i'll explain to you what all of the code means for the fox character and the state machine all right so finally moving on from the fox character you want to add a new scene with 2d and let's add a 2d scene and from here we want to change this into an area area 2d node so change type and then you want to do area 2d from here we want to save our scene so let's press uh, ctrl s and then from here we want to go to our stages and let's create a new folder called stage assets then we can call this ledge.tsem there we go and so from here there are two more nodes that we want to add we want to add a label node it's actually down here for me and then we want to add a collision shape 2d so now with our collision shape 2d we want to make a rectangle shape 2d and the dimensions we want to the, the dimensions we want to give it is uh, 30 by 20.6 this is the one that specifically works for my game so if you want to change the dimensions of your collision shape 2d that is possible okay and so as for the label what you want to do is click on the label and change the align and v align so that it is both on center and once you do that just type something in like ledge or test just so that you know that the text is there from here you want to click on the area 2d or node 2d yeah it's an area 2d and change the name to ledge there you go 
and another thing that we want to do is we want to click on the area 2d node and change its layer from being on layer 1 where the player is and put it on layer 4 where the ledge is and so the next thing to do is we're going to now add a script to the ledge so we're going to add script and we're going to call it ledge.gd and under this i want you to paste this code And once you've pasted this, or once you've copied down this code, the next thing I want you to do is go to the area 2D, click on where it says node, and where it says body exited, we want to make, we want to click on that as a signal and connect it over here. And you should see this symbol to signify that it's connected. And so that's pretty much it for this part of the tutorial. Um, the only thing that we really need to do now is fix some errors that I've made. So one of the errors that I've made is on the collision shape 2D, the extent here is actually not meant to be 30, but instead it's meant to be 37.5. So yeah, you want to change that to 37.5 over here. And lastly, if you go back to the Fox state machine, if you go to the state machine here and you go to ledge hold, if oh, that's my phone rather if you hold the ledge for too long you're going to go into tumble this is something that's meant to be for a future tutorial but since we haven't implemented the tumble state yet we're going to change this to air and we'll address this in a future video but apart from that that should be all of the bug fixes that need to be done and so from here if you don't want the explanation of the code you can go to the end of the tutorial and see the demonstration of the game and the code and so starting off the explanation part of the tutorial we can go to the state machine and i'm going to explain to you what each of these ledge states represents and what they mean so if i go down to the ledge catch state this is quite self-explanatory what i'm saying over here is that if the parent dot frame is more than seven our lag frames will equal zero. The amount of double jumps that we have will also reset to zero or reset to one or reset to the amount of max jumps that you have. You're going to understand this as I go through the explanation as to how we've added the double jumps. But our jumps are going to reset, our frames are going to reset, and then we're going to be changed over to the ledge hold state. As for the ledge hold state, there are multiple parts to this. The first part to this is when you are holding the ledge and you stay on the ledge for too long. What this is meant to do is it's meant to wait for 3.5 seconds and after 3.5 seconds you're going to be teleported. So whenever we see self.parent.position.y we are teleporting our, pl uh, our player character and so we're going to reset the frames and we're going to put our character in the air state. That's what this part of the code does. As for when you press down, when you grab the ledge, you're able to press down once you're holding it. So the way this works is we, it's basically similar to the fast four code that we have for the aerial state that we have down here. And so that's how this works. You just press down and you're going to go into fast four. We add this regrab code here to say that once you let go of the ledge, you are immediately able to regrab the ledge once again. That's what the ledge hold code here represents. Now, what this part of the code here and the, this part of the code over here is saying is, is, is looking at where the ray cast of our player character is casting to. If it is more than zero, then that means our character is facing to the right. And if it is less than zero, that means our character is facing to the left. And so this code and this code is the same, but anything that's facing to the left or to the right is inversed. And so what this is saying is that if you're facing to the right and you press left, you're going to let go of the ledge. That's all that's going to happen. And so what we do is we reduce your air velocity. We reset the regrab uh, variable, which means you are allowed to regrab. You re do reset ledge. And we teleport your character you're not going to be catching the ledge anymore and then you're going to be go, uh, going into the air state however 
if you press to the right and you are facing to the right you're gonna go into the ledge climb state if you end up pressing shield we actually don't have anything for shield yet um as we have as we haven't added any defensive moves yet but that's going to come in a future tutorial and if you jump you're going to ledge jump but yeah ledge roll this is going to come soon enough and the same thing is true of if your ray cast is facing to the left ledge climb this is how you actually get the animation of our character climbing to work what we are doing is we're just going frame by frame and we're just teleporting our player character whilst they're in this state onto the stage so on frame one nothing happens on frame five we're moving our character up a little bit on frame 10 we're moving our character up a little bit it's just frame it's basically a frame by frame animation that is moving our character and so then what we do is we turn our character around to make very clear that our character is uh, gonna be facing the right direction once they get up from the ledge and parent.catch is going to be equal to false because our character is no longer catching the ledge or grabbing the ledge anymore we also want to make our character uh, characters move and collide we want to call it again to make sure that if our character somehow is within the stage itself that our character will kind of teleport on top of the stage and so that our character is not stuck in the stage once it is teleported on frame 25 and on frame 30 we do reset ledge and then we reset the frame timer again moving on to ledge jump this is actually kind of a an, uh, an error here since we don't actually have attacks or special moves here but we don't have inputs for that so there's no issues here but if we did have attacks or special moves here what we'd be saying is if you're in the ledge jump state and the frame timer is more than 14 if you do press attack or special move you will go into the attack or special move in the direction that you're pressing or in the neutral version of the attack or special move if you're not pressing any direction if this condition is not uh, fulfilled then you move on to this line of code which, which says that at frame 5 we do parent or reset ledge and actually whilst i uh, was analyzing to see what each of these functions do i realized this this function over here is kind of redundant i don't think it actually does anything so if you can find a way to get rid of this without it breaking the code then uh, more power to you but yeah on frame 5 we are teleporting our character up more on frame 10 we're saying that that character is no longer catching the ledge which means that they are from frame from frame 10 onwards if they were to catch a ledge again they would be able to um our character moves up a bit more and if you press jump and you and you still have some double jumps available you will go into a jump and then into uh into the air state then at frame 15 what's this saying oh this is just propelling our character upwards so all of this is basically just moving our character upwards in an arc and then moving on to ledge roll ledge roll is quite uh, self-explanatory the ledge roll is quite similar to ledge climb it's pretty much the same thing but you are teleported uh, a, a much further distance for at each frame and so but since we don't have the shield button implemented or any mechanic this is kind of redundant for now but in future tutorials this is something that will actually come to fruition and so moving on to how the aerial jump works or the double jumps or triple jumps or the unlimited jump work the way we did this is by creating two variables one of these variables is called air jump and the other one is air jump max which is pretty self-explanatory air jump max is the no maximum number of air jumps you can do so in this case for fox you can only do one air jump aka a double jump or some other characters you might want to have triple jump so you can make this number two and so what i've done actually is i've made this variable an exported variable so that if you want to make your character jump let's say a thousand times in the air you can do that just in case you don't want your character to you know fall off the stage and have to restart the whole good dope project all over again you know by press and play again and so that's why i made it an exported variable and so the way the state machine actually works is our state our double jump mechanic works by making air jump equal to air jump max and then reducing air jump every single time you jump so if let's say you go to the standing state 
you will see a function called reset jumps. What this is doing is it's making the air jumps equal to the number of maximum air jumps that you can do. So in this case, if let's say you're touching the ground and you're standing, air jumps will be equal to one. And so if you're in the air and I go to the aerial state, if you if you press jump and the, and the number of air jumps that you have is more than zero, you will double jump and it will take away one air jump. And so it will keep doing this until you've reached zero. And once you've reached zero, you're no longer able to air jump anymore. And so that's how we are able to implement double jumping or triple jumping or unlimited jumping into the game. And so moving on from how we've gotten the double jumps to work and we've gotten the ledge states to work. Now I can actually explain to you how the ledge itself works. And so the way this works is by if you look at if you look at the area 2D node and you go to the signals, we have made a signal for when the body has exited this area. So once your character has grabbed this ledge, there is a signal that is emitted once the character lets it jumps away from the ledge, walks away from the ledge, climbs off from the ledge, falls off from the ledge, whatever. And so what this is doing is was now saying that it is no longer grabbed anymore. This is so that two people are not able to grab the ledge at the same time. If one person grabs the ledge, the ledge will now be grabbed, is grabbed will be true. And if is grabbed is already true, then our character will no longer be able to grab it. So if I go to the state machine and I go to is grabbed down here, you see that once we've grabbed the ledge, the, 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 the collider is going to make it true. However, if you look at the conditions as for how we are able to see if our ledge is able to be grabbable, we see if the collider is already grabbed, aka to see if this ledge is already grabbed. If it's already grabbed, nobody else can grab it at the same time. And so apart from that, we have this exported variable and what this is saying is it's pretty much saying, it's pretty much saying which side of the area 2D is this ledge going to be grabbed from. Is it going to be grabbed from the left or to the right? If it's from the left, then once the, the player character's ray cast collides with this area, our player character will be teleported to the left side. And if it's to the right, then our player character will be teleported to the right side. And so the way this works within our player character is that if you look at this function over here, what we are saying is if our front collider or our ledge grab f is colliding we want to make uh, a variable for the collider which is basically just this area and we are now making a bunch of conditions as to whether or not we are actually able to grab this ledge so first of all we need to see if the collider's label is either equal to ledge underscore l for left or ledge underscore r if it's ledge underscore L, then we're going to go for this block of code over here. If it's ledge underscore R, then we go for this block. And so we also want to check if we are pressing down, because if you're pressing down in Smash Bros games and Rivals of Aether type of games, you're not able to grab the ledge if you're pressing down. So if you're pressing down, you won't be able to grab the ledge. So that's why we're saying if you're not pressing down. And if parent grab is equal to zero. Regrab is a variable that we created earlier. It basically is the amount of time it takes from when you've already grabbed the ledge to when you've not grabbed the ledge to be able to grab the ledge again. So I think I've set it to 30 frames. If I go into the uh, variables for the character, it should be, yeah, re-grab is 30 frames. And so what this is pretty much saying is, after you grab the ledge, that frame counter, that, that re-grab variable is gonna go down by one each frame. And so once it reaches zero, the regrab is equal to zero. And so then we're saying that if it is equal to zero, you won't be able to, you will be able to grab the ledge. If all of these conditions are met, you are able to grab the ledge. Now, once you are able to grab the ledge, we are saying that if you're in the aerial states, for example, and you're moving upwards, you are not gonna grab the ledge. You're gonna return false. However, if this is not the case, then you move on to the next block of codes. And what all of this is doing is it's resetting our frame to zero, it's making our velocity stop. So it doesn't matter how fast you're moving, you're going to stop immediately and you're going to be teleported to the correct position. 
you're going to turn around to face the right direction and your jumps are going to be reset so that you're able to double jump again. Fast falling is going to be equal to falls, you're going to grab the ledge, it's just, this is just setting a bunch of variables over here. And then lastly, it's returning true. And so this is basically just repeating, this, this block of code is repeating for if the ledge is on the right and then this is repeating for the back ray cast. And so if this code returns true, I can scroll all the way to the top and I say if, the, if all the requirements are fulfilled, then we're going to reset the frame and we're going to put our player character in ledge catch state. Otherwise, our character is going to reset the ledge. And that's pretty much it. So going back to our ledge script, the reason why we want to check or make this exported variable for the ledge side, as you can see over here, is so that if our ledge side is equal to left, the text of the label will be ledge underscore L. Otherwise, it will be ledge underscore R. Because if it's ledge underscore L, then in the state machine script over here in the ledge function, if it is ledge underscore L, then it will act as though our character is coming from the left side. And if it's ledge underscore R, then it will act as though our character is coming from the right side. And so that sums it up pretty much for this tutorial. Now I can actually demonstrate to you what the game looks like. Okay, and so the way this is going to work is you go to the test stage and you instance child scene and you want to put in the ledge. And so I already have the properties for where I have to place this. So I'm just going to paste it, which is going to be over here near the right ledge. And so what I can do here is duplicate it and put it on the other side as such. And then I can duplicate it again and just put it somewhere up here random. And so the one over here, I want it to be the right side. Over here, I want it to be the left side. And then up here, I can make it the right side. It doesn't really matter. And so now I can run the game. And you can see I have a double jump. And if I want to grab the ledge, it will grab the ledge. If I want to grab this ledge, it will grab the ledge over here. Yeah, that's a little problem over there. I can fix that. But... Yeah, everything seems to be working fine. If I go to the other uh, other side of the ledge, I'll be able to grab it. And so everything seems to be fine. If you don't like the positioning of where your character is when they grab the ledge, that is something that you can adjust with the ledge hold state. But ultimately, everything seems to be working well. Our ground states seem to be working well. We can moonwalk. We can moonwalk onto the onto the ledge. I noticed that that's a problem. Keep uh, going into the aerial state when I'm moving to. Uh, that's something I, I can fix right now, actually. So the way I can fix that is simply by just going to the ray cast over here and dragging that all the way to the edge of our character, rather than putting it in the middle of our character. So simply do that, and our character won't be going into the aerial state for no reason. But yeah, we can uh, moonwalk. There you go. Moonwalk into the into the ledge, and so yeah, that calls it for this tutorial. I'll see you guys in a bit. And congratulations, you've made it through another video. In the next video, I'm going to be either going through adding art to this main stage that we've created in the second episode. Or I'm going to go through like a multi-part series within this series as to how to add hitboxes and hurtboxes and the such. So if you're enjoying the series and you're enjoying the videos, give the video a like. And uh, don't forget to check out the Patreon where there is now a Discord community and you can get access to all the scripts and folders. So uh, if you're looking forward to the next video, I'll see you there. And again, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in a bit. Peace.